Hey everyone, how you doing? If you are new here, I'm Nicole Concilio and welcome to the video, y'all. Before everybody asks in the comments, because I know you're gonna wanna know, the lipstick I'm wearing is Clinique and it's 07 blush. So it's a rainy day in Los Angeles today and it's super cold. I have very little motivation right now and I actually have some photos that I took the other day that I wanted to edit, upload to Instagram and just like post and stuff and I figured since I'm gonna do that anyway and I've never really done on my channel how I like to edit my photos and stuff like that and I asked on Twitter if this is something that you guys would be interested in and a lot of you were like yes 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 please 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 and I was like okay cool that's easy I could do it I could sit down I could hang with y'all and some of you guys even said that you would love for me to talk about my lighting my setup what I use for my setup so I figured I would throw that into this as well. And yeah, I'm gonna screen record me editing a photo. We'll do the before and afters. This is specifically like a selfie, I guess you could say. The photo we're gonna be editing today is this one. And I actually took it on my iPhone. I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Bitch, they make these names so long now. Like it used to just be like, oh, I have the iPhone 6. Oh, I have the iPhone 8. Now it's like I have the iPhone iPhone 11 Pro Max in the big version with the 200 get whatever the hell my god but first I want to talk about some of the apps I like to use I have a whole thing on my phone for photography and it's literally four pages my main thing that I use for editing is Facetune and Visco I have some other apps thrown in here but honestly those are the most I use and as far as like Instagram stories go like you know how a lot of people make those those cute stories they're like trendy or whatever the two apps that I like to use are called unfold and story art this is what story art looks like they have a bunch of things in here that you could do and play around with and like different things like you know that a lot of influencers beauty creators content creators whatever the hell they want to be called these days they like to <laughs> use stuff like that I've seen very common for unboxings unfold is pretty much the same I actually have in here some of my previous stories on here so just flipping on through but yeah you could do a a lot of things on those two apps that is the apps I like to use for stories but let's get into Facetune and what I like to do and so I have the photo up already in Facetune this is what I like to do now I will say the quality on the iPhone 11 Pro is good like you could literally see my pores and it's a, almost a little bit too sharp for my liking. What I like to do the most is play around with the color tool and also the smoothing tool and the details tool. Those are my three tools that I touch the most when I'm editing a selfie. When I'm doing a full body paint, there's a little bit more that goes into that. But we're just gonna focus on selfies right now. And what I'm gonna do is start off with the smoothing tool. And I like to pretty much just tap. Um, a lot of people will drag their fingers, but I like to, my photos to look a little bit more realistic, so I just kind of tap all around the photo, and you can see, like, you know, I'll go back and forth, so you guys can see before and afters as well, but just to get a nice, smooth base. Listen, we live in a world where Facetune is, like, second nature now, so I'm not afraid to say, like, I Facetune. We all Facetune, okay? And if people say they don't Facetune, they're lying to you. It's so funny when we go on brand trips, it's always like, pass around the Facetune, bitch. Pass around that Facetune. So next, what I like to do is play around with the colors underneath my eyes. Obviously, everybody's face is three-dimensional, so there are gonna be parts where the light hits, where the light doesn't hit, where shadows kind of cast, where shadows kind of create a cast, and I get shadows underneath my eyes. I'm blessed right now, I'm only 26 years old, and I don't have dark circles, but the lighting definitely plays like a key factor in this. This photo was taken in daylight and also with a ring light, so that's like a double whammy, like that's a pretty good situation to have, but still, underneath my eyes, I'm not digging. So I like to zoom on in and use the tones tool, 
and I'll pick a spot of my face that's lighter. Typically underneath my eyes, it'll look a little bit more blue tone and I don't know, it just looks weird. So I'll pick a tone like around here on my face. This is usually where I'll pick it from. And then I'll use the actual tones button to fill it in and like you can see a little bit before and after. It's very subtle things that I like to change here. We're not doing like humongous changes. Like it's super subtle. Like you might even be like, what the hell is she talking about? Like I don't even know if it's translating, you know? And then I do the same thing over here on this side, just kind of tapping. I'm literally just like lightly tapping. So you can see it brightens up the under eye and it just makes things pop and look a little bit better. Another spot where I like to do this is on the top of my lip. I have lip fillers and a very, very, very common thing with lip fillers is it kind of looks like you could have a mustache in some pictures. That's just how it is. You guys know I got my lip fillers dissolved about two or three years ago. It was the most painful thing in the world, but basically they broke my lip border and the fillers started going up here and I had to get it dissolved, and there is still some filler in my lips, I'm not gonna lie, but I do overdraw my lips a lot. So using that same color we picked, I'm just tapping and lightening up that situation. That way it just looks, you know, it just looks better. It's all about like preference as well. Like some people might not like lightening up their face in certain areas, but I like it because it just gives it more of like that airbrushed look. So there you guys can see as I'm pressing the before and afters, you can see like how much of a difference just that little bit of lighting made, you know what I mean? Like that little bit of extra light that we have. So next what I wanna do is go in to my nose and around my nose area, and this is me being like extremely nitpicky, okay? We are our own worst critics, bitch. Like, it is so damn true. But I'm gonna go ahead and smooth out around my nose just a little bit more. I'm also just smoothing out any closer fine lines that I'm not a fan of. So you can see even there when I hit the before and after, it takes away some of that detail on my nose so that it just doesn't look like, oh, her skin is dry AF. You know what I mean? It's like little things like that. I also will play around with my hairline. I'm not ashamed to admit that like whatsoever. I'm 26 years old and I have severely damaged bleached hair. Like it is what it is, you know what I mean? And I've always had one side, this side of my hairline is always been a little bit higher. So I'll zoom on in and use the reshape tool and I'll use the refine and I'll just bring my hairline down the slightest. Again, like just showing you guys what I do and the difference in the photos, like you can really see. And even sometimes if I'm feeling it, I'll tune my jaw a little bit, you know what I mean? It really just depends. It depends on the angle, it depends on the light. Like it literally just depends. Now this, this is my real jaw. This is my real jaw. This is what it is. This is real. Everybody always asks me if it's fake. It's real, it's bone. Can you hear that? It's bone. So sometimes I feel like it looks a little bit deformed in photos, so sometimes I'll push it back a little bit. I've always been really self-conscious about this jaw, but as I've just like gotten older, it hasn't been as prominent. So for that, I'm a little bit grateful because I was definitely very self-conscious of it. Next thing what I like to do is take the details tool and I'll fluff that through my brows because my brows are rough and rugged and I feel like rough, rugged brows are in right now so I'll just use the details tool to make that pop a little bit. And it's a very subtle thing, like it's very, very subtle but I like to do it because I feel like it really makes my brows stand out and looks cool, you know what I mean? It's on trend, I really like the way it looks. I kinda like smooth as I go, but overall everything I do is in tapping motions. Even smooth out my nose a little bit more. And then as far as my eyes go, I'll take the details tool and I will sometimes run that across to bring out a little bit more color in my eye. I know sometimes like another alternative you can do is to play around with the paint again and just kind of do that. But you can see it really brings out the detail in my eyes. I'll smooth a little bit underneath my eyes. Nothing like crazy because I still at the end of the day want to look like myself. There are some people that facetune so much that when I see them in real life, I'm like, 
Oh my God, your pictures are alive. So I never want to be that bitch, you know what I mean? I never want to be that person that's like catfishing and shit. And then one of the last things I do in editing a photo is I'll actually take the whiten tool, which is meant for your teeth, and I'll whiten up my highlight with it. And this is kind of like the finishing touches where you can really see the highlight come to life. And if you're wondering how people get highlight popping, it's nine out of 10 times either sunlight, because that's really the only bitch that does it, or it's edited. And there's nothing wrong with edited highlight. There's nothing wrong with edited photos. There's nothing wrong with edited selfies, whatever. It's part of the art form, you know what I mean? I just kind of do it like that. And you can always zoom out and erase. Like I'll always like erase a little bit because I don't want it to look too edited you know what I mean that is my before and after and obviously you could see the hairline is the adjusted I moved my jaw a little bit like it honestly you can do whatever you want like it really depends like this photo I'm editing a little bit more because there was uneven light I didn't really like the way my neck look like literally I just didn't like it and I'm like so not ashamed of this you know what I mean I'm like so not ashamed these are my tricks and gifts to you guys you know what I mean like use them I'm going to now add in did I forget to save that photo I totally forgot to save that photo don't forget to save your facetune photo because clearly I can't remember to do that okay so now I'm loading my photo into visco okay so I pay for visco however when I got the new iPhone, for some reason, it does not remember my membership. So I've just been screenshotting. Like, it literally will not let me rebuy it. Like, I've tried a bajillion accounts. I've tried literally resetting my iPhone. Like, I've done everything. So it is what it is. So basically... In Visco, this is where like I feel like my photo really comes to life because it just manipulates the lighting even more. So they have a few tabs on here. You could go through all the preset and there's literally hundreds. And they also have the for this photo. Sometimes I like the for this photo and sometimes it shits the bed. Right now, it's shitting the bed a bit for me because I'm kind of like, no, we could do better. So I'm gonna go into all presets and find a preset that I like. I use all different presets. Like it doesn't really matter what I'm in the mood for. Like I use all. I don't think I stay consistent with any preset like at all. So... It just is like what the eye likes, what my eye likes. Sometimes I like to do stuff that bring out the contrast more and it's kind of like, ooh, that's a nice lit photo. So this is just gonna be me now finding what I like. Usually the C portion of the presets are all really good and I only apply the filter about halfway. I don't like the photo to look too over filtered. Yeah, I like the way this one looks. It kind of takes out the yellowness in my skin and makes my lipstick, my shirt, everything pop a little bit more. So I'm going to leave that at about 5.7 because I have crazy OCD. Let's do 5.8. It has to be an even number. And then I go into further settings and I add a little bit of skin tone. I'll usually bring that down because I don't like my skin to look too yellow or green. I have olive skin tone, so sometimes that can happen. And then here, I like to add a little bit of green, uh, just bring the photo to life, and then I'll add a little bit of saturation on the photo. So that way, like, it looks, looks really good like this. I really like the way this looks. I'll just screenshot it because, like I said, I have a problem with the payment and all that shit. I don't know why. It doesn't let me do it, but... And this right here is how I edit my photo, y'all. I like that. This was a good photo to edit because I could really, really show you guys a lot on this. When I have eyeshadow on, like, sometimes I'll go in a little bit more. But for the most part, this is pretty much it. And then another app I wanted to show you guys, which I use for my IGTVs. This app is called InShot. And this is what it looks like. I love it for my IGTVs like and it saves drafts for you so literally all of my IGTVs all of my singing videos they're all in here and it's super easy to use 
I'll open up a project right now for you guys just so we can see. All of the stuff is right here. All you have to do is just like tap on a piece of the video you want to edit and literally everything is right there. You can do filters. You can do music. I literally add my music up in here and you could do text, whatever you want. Like literally you could do anything. You could split tracks. You could do anything you want, delete, you can control the volume and it lets you apply to all so that way you don't have to go in and lower the volume of everything. I like to film my IGTV videos on my phone, especially my skincare videos. So yeah, this app InShot is a really good app. I super, super love it and you know, it's great. I've actually found that like, Filming on my phone with IGTVs is like way better and easier than it is with my camera. And that I am going to transition into the next portion of this video and we're gonna talk about my lighting and my camera. Okay, so I went around my beauty room and I took a little bit of a video that my editor will insert for you guys. And I also wanna talk about having an editor because I don't think a lot of people talk enough about it on, you know, YouTube and all that stuff. So I film with the Canon 5D Mark IV. It's the first self-focusing or auto-focusing camera in Canon's line that is a DSLR. But before that, I used to film with the Canon 80D, which is just as good. So if you're a little bit on a budget and looking for a good quality camera, I highly recommend the Canon 80D or the Canon 70D. They're both really good and I would say they're, you could probably find them used easily for under a grand, like maybe even under 500, maybe under 600. Let me check Amazon, what's Amazon selling them for? The Canon 70D with a lens, which is huge, is 850 and that's brand new. So. I know that that's very expensive and stuff like that, but as far as like investing in your career, I think that it's worth it. Like if, if anybody watching is a fellow aspiring YouTuber or whatever, I personally think Canon cameras are the way to go over Sony. Now, if you talk to some other people, they might recommend Sony, but I think for video purposes that Canon are the best. The lens I use is the 70 to 200, and it's a big boy, bad boy lens, and it's amazing. Like, I could literally zoom in as much as I need to to show you guys a tutorial. I love it so much and it's a pricey AF setup that I have here, but it's flawless. I haven't had to change it or get new equipment or anything literally in two and a half years. So your investment in your career or photography or videography, whatever it may be, I personally think it's worth it because when you're buying the best of the best, you don't have to really ever buy again. You know what I mean? For a long ass time, for a long time. For my lighting, I have two lights right here next to me with poster boards directing the light in on me. And I'm gonna give a little bit of a shout out to Karen, I love Sedai, because she helped me with this setup, I would say like probably two or three years, maybe three years, four years ago? Holy shit, maybe three or four years ago. It's awesome because these lights, they don't really have directors and you wanna have the light directing in on you. And I use the Kino Flow lights. They are the Diva Light 415s, also super expensive. You guys, I'm not sitting here and saying any of this shit is affordable. I'm just telling you what I use and what I would recommend to people who are in a position that can afford these types of things, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to throw them around money like it's nothing, but also at the end of the day, this was an investment for my career and I, again, have had the same setup for three and a half years now and I haven't had to change anything. So I'm super happy with all my equipment that I have 
and I use a tripod from Amazon. Like there's a lot of crucial things that Amazon has that I recommend looking up. Like you could totally find a tripod, like Amazon Basics tripod. Like you could find Amazon soft boxes lights as an alternative of the Kino Flows. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff Amazon has to offer. So I would highly recommend checking them out as well. For my monitor, what you guys constantly see me looking in, I use, I'm looking at it right now. It's called Feel World, Feel World Monitor. And that was pricey, but it's a good monitor. It shows me all the levels on the screen. It shows me when I'm recording, when I stop recording. It shows my microphone levels, literally everything. And I love it. It was worth every single penny. I have never had an issue with this monitor in my entire YouTube career. The only thing I will say is that it goes through batteries fast. So if you are gonna be using this, I would say to have at least two batteries or three or four, honestly, because I go through the batteries super fast. They're rechargeable, so I kind of like have one always charging while I'm filming one in the back there. The microphone that I use is a Rode microphone. It sits on my desk on a little stand and the monitor is on an Amazon basic stand. I will try my best to get links to everything in the description down below as far as gear and equipment goes. I kind of suck at doing that, but I will make it a conscious effort to do it. And the table that I film with is also from Amazon. I, yeah, it's from Amazon. It was literally, it's like a foldable table. It was literally 50 bucks, like nothing. You know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things. And I know a lot of up and coming YouTubers and beauty creators will always ask me like, when do you feel is the right time to get an editor? And honestly, I have to tell you guys like, I do not know what I would do without my editor, Tom. Like, literally, round of applause for Tom because he busts his ass for me. And because I have an editor now in my life, it gives me the opportunity to have a life and to do things. I would say I got an editor around 500,000 subscribers. And that was when I feel like I was pumping out the most content. I had no life. My vision was getting blurry because I was constantly like two hours of filming, two hours of editing, no life whatsoever. Wasn't getting exercise, wasn't communicating with the outside world, wasn't doing shit. And getting an editor is probably the best decision I've ever done and have made in my YouTube career because having Tom literally gives me the opportunity to have a life. Like now, all I need to do is sit here, bang out videos, we transfer him the files, and he gets them to me. Having an editor is definitely a costly thing, so I would say like, once you hit a certain threshold where you feel like your YouTube money is good, and you feel like you can afford to have an editor, I feel like that's when you'll know. You know what I mean? That's when I knew. Because for a long time, I was also very anal and I really wanted to have full control of my videos. I was like, how the hell is the editor gonna know what I want? How is he gonna know what to cut out? How is he gonna know what to do? I trust my editor so much that sometimes I don't even watch my videos before I upload them. Like literally, I'll watch it as it's uploading. I'm like, oh, okay. This is great, Tom did great. That is how good my editor is and how well we co-mingle together, you know what I mean? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open it up and here are the people. Like literally that is how well we co-mingle and I'm so grateful for him. He's getting a raise in the new year, he already knows this. Having an editor has literally saved my personal life, it's saved my sanity and it's saved my mental health because <laughs> I don't think people realize how much goes into doing a video. Like I am so incredibly blessed to have YouTube be my job and have beauty be my main career and just like, oh, just so blessed and so grateful for each and every one of you. But I don't think people really get how in depth and how long and how like treacherous it could sometimes be to film a video, edit a video, upload it, film a video, edit a video, upload it. Like you don't have a personal life. So having an editor has made my life way better. Like, ah. Uh, 
Busa. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry. I feel like it's gonna be a lengthy one. I'm really, really, really sorry, but I had a lot to say here. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And again, I will try my hardest to have all the links of everything I talked about down below for you guys. And if you have any questions on lighting or editing, let a bitch know in the comments down below. I love you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.